Hello again. Uh, today I want to show you a problem uh, consisting of a very uh, basic mechanical system with a mass, spring, and damper. And uh, I want to get the differential equation of this system, and there's no force acting on this system, so we're going to disturb this by some initial displacement, and maybe initial velocity. In this case, I'm just going to have an initial displacement. And then I'm going to get the differential equation, and then I'm going to plug in some numbers and um, solve the differential equation. So here I'm going to um, say, okay, if we disturb this system, the mass by x, right, try to draw the free body diagram of this, what do we have? We have the force of the spring, which would be kx, right, and the force of damper, which is going to be cx dot. x dot is the velocity. Uh, and since the disturbance is to the right, we take that to be our positive direction, so we sum forces in the x direction equal mass times acceleration. This is our positive direction, of course. So then we have what? Minus kx minus cx dot equal mass times acceleration. Of course, mass uh, times acceleration. Acceleration is x double dot. So a general differential equation of uh, with the mass spring damper is mx double dot plus cx dot, let's put it in order, plus kx equal zero. Now, let me go ahead and um, assign some values here. So I'm going to use metric uh, units here. So let's say the mass is simply one kilograms. Uh, the spring constant is, say, two newtons per meter. And finally, the, uh, this, the uh, damping coefficient or damping constant is three newton seconds per meter. So my differential equation becomes x double dot then, after I plug in these values, plus 3x dot plus 2x equals 0. And I'm going to give you some initial conditions here, and I will use Laplace in a minute to find the, dif the to solve the differential equation. So my initial conditions, I see, are at t equals 0, I'm going to give it this disturbance of one centimeter to this mass, this disturbance I showed you here. And let's say I don't have any initial velocity, so x dot is equal to zero. Okay, so objective is to solve this differential equation and go to the, uh, find x as a function of time. So we're going to use Laplace. Let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so I'm going to go to the next page, rewrite this differential equation for you. Um, so we have 3x dot plus 2x equals zero. Remember the initial conditions are x at zero is equal to one and x dot at zero is equal to zero. So how do we go about solving this differential equation? You remember from the last video that I would take the Laplace of both sides of this equation. So when we take the Laplace, we're going to have what? Laplace of second derivative is s squared x of s minus s x of zero minus x dot of zero, right? plus 3, make sure you put a parenthesis here, the, the plus of first derivative is s x of s uh, minus x of 0, and then finally we have 2, and the plus of x in the time domain is x of s equals 0. Got a little bit messy here, let me clean this up for you, sorry. So this is s. Okay. Now, keep in mind that this guy is equal to 1, this guy is equal to 0 initial velocity, and this guy is equal to 1. So after you clean this up and you factor x of s, you end up getting s squared plus 3s plus 2 times x of s. And then these terms that they are generated from the initial condition like this guy and 3 times this guy goes to the other side becomes s plus 3. So now our transfer functions, in a way, x of s becomes s plus 3 divided by s squared plus 3s plus 2. So my objective now is to solve this, uh, to actually bring this back to the time domain, use inverse Laplace. But I cannot use inverse Laplace unless if I put it in the format that I could easily use those formulas. So notice that why is this an overdamped case? Overdamped case refers to when the roots of this equation are real. Roots 
are real. So the two roots are here actually are negative one and negative two. You see, you can easily see that if you break this into an s plus one and s plus two, when you say it equal to zero, you get minus one and minus two. And remember in the last video, uh, I showed you that if the roots are complex conjugates, then you have an underdamped case. You end up having, you know, some exponential attached to sine and cosine. In this case, we're just going to get the exponential decaying functions, and you'll see that in a minute. So when the roots are real, your system is overdamped. So let's go ahead and solve this. How do we do that? You got to do a partial fraction. So in other words, this s plus 3 over s plus 1 times s plus 2 can be written as a1 over s plus 1 plus a2 over s plus 2. And once we find a1 and a2, then we are all set. We can easily go back to the time domain and get the, the response of the system, which is the way the mass is going to move uh, easily. So let me go to the next page and rewrite this for you one more time. So we have what? S plus 3 divided by S plus 1 times S plus 2, right? And that's equal to A1 over S plus 1 plus A2 over S plus 2. So let's go ahead and try to find A1 and A2. There are different ways that you could do this. But the way that they show you in the textbook, I'm going to use that, uh, even though the way I learned it in, you know, many years ago are a little bit different. I'm trying to match actually the, uh, the numerators. But let me just show you the, uh, the, the, the usual way. Okay, so if you want to find A1, the method is that you multiply both sides of this equation by the same thing, by S plus 1. Because A1 in the denominator, you have S plus 1. So if you go ahead and multiply this by S plus 1 and do this for every term on both sides, right? Look what happens. This S plus 1 and S plus 1 cancel. You just isolate A1 here by itself. And now, look, if I go ahead and evaluate this guy, evaluate everything at S equal minus 1, right? I don't even have to worry about this A2 term because if I put S minus 1 here, this becomes 0. So A2 term is gone. So look what happens. A1 then becomes... If you plug in s equal minus 1 here, minus 1 here, and minus 1 here, minus 1 and minus 1, right? You end up getting 2 over uh, 1, so you get a1 equal 2. Similarly, then you can go ahead and multiply both sides by s plus 2. So when you do that, actually, you isolate a2, and I'm not going to go through that, but just show you that if you multiply by s plus 2, then you end up having s plus 3 over s plus 1, and then you evaluate this at s equal negative 2. So when you do that, you get negative 2 plus 3 over negative 2 plus 1, and it actually becomes negative 1. So we just determined that our function x of s in the s domain is a1, which is 2 over s plus 1, plus a2, which is minus 1, I just determined it for you, is s plus 3. And now when I go to the time domain, guys, look what happens. This simply becomes 2 e to the minus t. And the next term actually negative. Let me erase this. Negative e to the minus 3t. So this is, this is an overdamped case two uh, exponentially decaying functions. So we'll look at other cases such as critically damped in the next video. Thank you.